see. Hello, everybody. Um, I appreciate your interest. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm actually part of the Cyber Physical Systems Group here at Graz University of Technology. And what we do mainly is um, si simulation and modeling of cyber physical systems, both with physical models, Daimler models, and um, Modetica models, as well as data modeling. And lately, we've been working on hybrid modeling as well, hybrid in the sense of combining data models with physics constraints, like physics informed modeling, as well as uh, this is not what I wanted to do. Sorry, physics informed models and um, neural ODEs, stuff like this. The latter part is mainly due to the collaboration with the Aarhus University, where I've just returned from a research stay. And they work on a lot of tool chains and a lot of toolkits for Modelica modeling, for FMU and FMI based things. And what I'm going to present today is basically an extension to their tool chain. So the talk is structured as, as follows. I'm going to talk about some of the, the specifics of FMU implementation and UniFMI, the architecture, the runtime dependencies that arise from this, then how Docker comes in as a virtualization engine, and then a case study that we actually used in our paper to demonstrate how the tool works. And then I'm going to wrap it up with a summary and a brief outlook of what we could do in the future. So the FMI standard, as you all know, is um, is based on a C API. So any any of the modeling FMI enabled modeling tools actually generate a C compatible binary. So the simulation code must always be compiled. So many of the other tools that are around that enable simulation of of basically arbitrary code have a very tight coupling between the simulation codes, so the single components, as well as the orchestration algorithm. Um, and there is UniFMU, the, the tool that I mentioned before, um, developed by the, the Aarhus University mainly, which is a way to, to wrap the arbitrary code from higher, higher level programming languages, such as, for example, Python or, or Java or C Sharp, into something that, com that is compatible with the FMI API. So UniFMU provides a binary that routes the communication between the FMI API calls and the model, which is then run in a separate process. So it can be arbitrary code, any high level programming languages will do, such as interpreted languages or garbage collected languages, or basically any tool chain or framework. It is an ongoing development. It can be found on GitHub. I put the link into the description or into the presentation here. And there's also uh, references to various publications around, around the whole thing. Basically, what happens in this is there is a C binary that dispatches all of the calls to small backend implementations. So out of the box, it supports Python, MATLAB, and C Sharp. There are some samples in, in the repository as well. And the communication between the binary, let's call it, we, or I will call it the dispatcher from now on, and the process happens via ZMQ on the TCP port. So the model process accesses information through environment variables, meaning that the, the dispatcher um, collects the information from the model description XML, and then makes it available to the process through the environment variables. It also contains, for example, the variables that are in the FMU, as well as the endpoint where the process can reach the dispatcher. We can have a look at the, at the architecture on this graph here, where you can see that the FMI calls and the model description go into the, into the dispatcher. This sets up a, a backend and communicates with this backend through this CMQ socket. The backend actually invokes the code that is defined in a model Pi. So this is a Python implementation. And the model Pi also has access to the environment variables. Now, the thing is, whenever there's some something runs on this machine, like the, like the Python backend, then it requires a, a runtime on the local machine, which means a Python interpreter, then all of the packages 
that are used within the model code, like for example, SciPy, TensorFlow, whatever you want to use basically. And the thing is that whenever you want to, to move the FMU to some other machine, you need to have the same or at least a compatible interpreter with all the packages installed. This can be tedious and sometimes even problematic because um, even if you install everything, there could still be the problem that there are conflicting dependencies or conflicting versions. This is a, a special, especially a problem with the Python interpreter versions, for example. So the question is really how to circumvent this problem and how to have FMUs that are generated from UniFMU as be as portable as compiled FMUs. Well, ship the requirements would be the obvious answer. But yeah, if yes, then how would you do this? Virtualization is the answer here. Um, and Docker provides a very nice way of doing this because it actually just ships a recipe instead of shipping the whole dependencies, which makes it very small. And it's also Docker is widely available through every platforms. So what you do is just first virtualize the client process and then ship the building instructions for the runtime environment. So if we look at the architecture from before again, this basically means that everything that's on the, on the process side from the model implementation, it goes into a Docker container. Communication still happens through the CMQ socket. The dispatcher still runs on the host machine. And that's about it, basically. It, this is, it turned out that this was a bit problematic if you, if you think cross-platform because there were networking issues because the way Docker works is quite different on Windows from it is from Linux. But in the end, it, it kind of, we kind of figured out the, the quirks of it by also using the dispatcher endpoints through the environment variables. So the thing is, how does it work? Well, if you started the FMI2 instantiate call, then the dispatcher basically hands the Docker file, which is the recipe for the runtime environment to the local Docker service that runs on the machine. The Docker service builds the image and then this image is run. So let's look at the components involved here. The Docker file is basically the setup or the recipe with the setup procedures and it initiates a multi-stage build. So you don't always start off from scratch and, and use a new machine and then install all of the dependencies, but there are pre-built images with the most common features available on Docker Hub. Like for example, some lightweight Linux distribution with a Python environment around it. What it does next is it adds dependencies that are necessary for the communication between the dispatcher and the, and the actual model process. And then it adds the dependencies that are used in the model implementations. For the future, we thought about maybe putting a requirements file here so that all of the dependencies that are necessary to run the model can go into a separate file and then we would just install it from the Docker file. But these are really just minor tweaks that everybody could just do on their own as well. And the final step in this multi-stage build would be to move over any resources that you need into the image. So I don't know how familiar all of you are with the distinction between image and container, but I'll just give a brief overview and maybe relate it to the, to the concepts and to the things that we need in the FMU. So the image is basically a fresh machine where all of the dependencies are installed, but it has no state, except for obviously the stuff that was installed on the machine. So the container on the other hand is an actual instance of the process. It is based on the image. So there's no additional setup necessary to go from the image to the container and it can retain a state. So this would basically be the actual instance of the machine that's running. So why the default choices for what of the things is retained and what is rebuilt? So what we said is that each of the instances of the FMU process shouldn't affect each other. So there should be no side effects by shared states or anything of that, of that sort. On the other hand, the initial conditions and the dependencies, so the packages and all of the requirements are the same for each of the instances. So it makes sense to reuse the images 
also because the build process takes a longer time. Now, the question that naturally arises would be, what if the model changes? Because then obviously there, there might be some differences in how we have to set up the runtime environment. Well, the, the, that's a good question really, but there are multiple ways of doing this, either the, the manual way of just deleting the image and rebuilding it. There's the, the other thing that you can just add a flag in, into the deployment script that we use to instantiate the container. Or maybe in the future, and this is what we thought about would be interesting, would be to have a look if an image exists, and then if the image is there, maybe build a checksum over the image and, and compare it to a new image that we would build for, for the FMU if it changes. But this is really just future work. So talking about future work, remote deployment is another thing that's, that's, that actually came to our minds and, and we thought about it. So to, to be able to deploy cer certain FMU instances to a remote machine. This is possible with Docker. It supports it with contexts and with Docker Compose. We would have to be careful about the port mapping because we already saw that this might be a problem with the, with the between different operating systems because there are more machines involved in, in this process than there are on the local machine. But we don't really see a reason why it shouldn't work. It just needs to be checked and somebody should probably do it in the future. So what I promised you is that we also verified our setup with a um, with a basically with a case study where we just used two FMUs that we generated with uni FMU in a co-simulation, just to highlight the, the different formalisms and, and things you can do with the tool. So one of the FMUs is a one joint single axis robot arm. This is basically an inverted pendulum. And uh, the other thing is a PID controller that minimizes the error between the desired angle of the robot arm and the actual current angle of the robot arm. So the robot arm basically inverted pendulum, as I said, we're moved by an electric motor. It is described by the, by the ODE that you see here. And on the right hand side, I put the actual Python implementation that we used to simulate the model. So what you see here is we used the SciPy library to solve the IVP for the dynamics described by the ODE. And it's really just nine lines of code. The other part would be the, the controller. Basically a continuous controller, you can see it in the second equation. I don't know if you see my mouse pointer, but I would assume no, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so it's a discretized version of this continuous controller where we actually want to minimize the, dif the difference between the desired and the actual angle given in the first equation. On the right-hand side, again, the Python implementation of the thing is really a, a very, very simple discretization um, approach where we replace the, the derivatives by first or, or the differences in the integral with a sum. The simulation, for the simulation, we used another tool chain, um, the Into CPS tool chain, which is also the, which happens to be by the same developers that also the, developed the UniFMU tool to orchestrate these two FMUs. You can see the results to the right. We can say it works. It can definitely be improved, obviously, for large step sizes, for example, the this very simple discretization scheme can become unstable, especially if the, if the step size of the simulation is different from the update, um, from the update rate of the controller. But the thing is, you can use any other scheme or packages that you want to, to improve this, but we somehow considered this to be beyond the point of this paper because it was really to show how to use the tool, not to have to provide a very sophisticated simulation. What it does show, however, is that it's very simple to use and that you can draw from a large ecosystem. Like if you think about Python, for example, there's a lot of packages, there's a lot of frameworks that, could, that you can use to do these things. And the idea is basically to engage users and to give them a quicker way to use all of the things, all of the tools that are at their hands in FMUs as well. Other high level features and functionality were also at the back of our minds. So for example, 
think of Python again, there are IDs, debugging tools. So what we did, for example, for verification and testing of the software, we ran the Python script separately in the Python environment and then um, had the whole thing executed through orchestration and everything. The other thing that's kind of the main point, I mean, I'm also trying to sell you UniFMU with this presentation just as well as the, as the Docker extension, but the, the main point of this paper was the extension to, to have the, the, the FMUs generated by UniFMU be just as portable as any compiled FMU, which is what we realized with Docker, except for the dependency of Docker, of course, but we think it's a very small price to pay for all the additional benefits that you have. And I'm using my mouse wrong though. So, so what is next? The thing is, as I said before, it's active development. So we're still working on it. We want to, we want to have a look at FMI3, of course, how it's, if it still works with this, if we need to adjust any of the things that we have already done. We want to always interested in adding more backends tutorials more automation, like for example, rebuilding the images or other new features that might be interested. Speaking of interested, if anybody's interested um, for collaboration, has ideas, questions, or want to discuss, here's my email address, and I'm also looking forward to questions.